Are you also always high when you see how much expansion you've made as a count or as a duke in the early game of Crusader Kings 3 to then only be scared shitless when it comes to succession because you may or may not have had one child too much? Well, don't worry in that case, because today we're going to go through all of the succession laws and I'm going to tell you how to keep your realm together with whatever succession type you have. Let's get right into it. Let's start off with Confederate Petition, the most hated of the succession laws in the game right now. Confederate Petition works by distributing the tiles you currently own under your children equally. No matter how many children you have, your children will always get something from you. The problem only arises when you're a count or a duke. Because when you're a count and a duke and you've expanded a lot and you're very happy about it, you may have also claimed another duke tile. You may have had like own three duke tiles. And whenever that happens, the game is like, you're not gonna keep your realm together, mister. Let me just take one of those. Because when you die and you have more than one heir, those dukes and tiles will go to the different heirs no matter whom they are. That is of course terrible for growing your kingdom because you can never expand and have a stable economy or anything along those lines. You will always be staying in your normal crown lands and whenever you expand the game is going to strip it from you, from you whenever succession comes up. We have to change that because also a fact that most people don't account for is you don't have to have titles currently created. You can only have be the duke of one tile, but have different dukedoms you could form but didn't do. And whenever you don't form them, the game is gonna form them anyways and distribute them to the children. Of course, they will become independent and no one is gonna grow from that. What you need to do to prevent that is start the game off right. Make sure that you're the head of your culture. And when you're the head of your culture, you need to get hereditary rule. Otherwise, you will not be able to get any kind of growth in your empire with more than one child. Because when you get hereditary rule, you can move up to the next highest succession level, which is Petition. Petition may not sound that different from Confederate Petition, but it very well is. Because the difference between Confederate Petition and Regular Petition is that in Regular Petition, no new tiles will be formed. So if you are the Duke of Austria and you conquered Steiermark, and you did not form the Dukedom of Steiermark, you will not have any kind of problems with that part of your country getting gaining independence because we'll always stay within your realm. Because with partition, the game is not going to create no new tiles. The only thing that could backfire a little bit is that one requirement you have, which is limited crown authority. Some vassals may not be happy about it and they may want to revolt against you. But in that case, don't forget to check out last week's video where I talked about how to manage your vassals and how to keep them happy. So don't forget to check that out. This will help a lot in the guide when we're going to go along and follow it. With Petition, you're in a very good spot, because other than just the usual counties you have in your realm anyways, nothing will be stripped of you, no matter how big your county or your duchy may be. But then there's still something way better than that, because if you lose counties, of course you're gonna lose tax money, you're gonna lose levies, they're not gonna contribute so much, you need to change treaties with them and make them unhappy about it, and that's not what we want. So the next biggest thing we've got going on is High Petition. High Petition is very similar to regular Petition, with the only difference that the game guarantees you that with High Petition, your main heir will gain at least 50% of all the crown holdings you have plus your primary title. So if you don't form any other duchy titles and you only have a few counties in your kingdom, at least 50% of those will go directly to you without you losing anything at all. To enact the High Petition Law, you need to wait a little bit though, because High Petition Law goes hand in hand with Heraldry, which is an invention that is only available in the High Middle Ages, and that means past at 1050 and a few more years according to that, because you will always start the game off in the early, medi in the early medieval ages, and you need to work your way up there. Until then, until then, go with Petition, it will work out just fine. Once you reach the late game though, after the year 1200, you will be able to get the best succession laws in the game. The primogenitor and the ultimate genitor laws. Before that, you can also reach house seniority, house seniority with the heraldry ideas, with the heraldry innovation. But doing that can oftentimes lead to some very funky, some very funky gameplay because the game doesn't account for the fact that the heir of your realm doesn't always have to be the realm, the heir of the player himself. So those things can shift and you may even end up as a duke somewhere in the Kingdom of England or something along the lines when you don't watch out with that. 
And the, if you then start to invest your time into the primogeniture inventions, you will be able to get the, not only the primogeniture, but also the ultimate geniture succession laws, which means you will only have one heir from this point on. Isn't that amazing? Finally. Although one has to say, for that you will need high crown authority, and some bastards may get very, very pissy about this very quick. The difference between primogeniture and ultimate geniture is only your ass. When you choose primogeniture, your oldest child will inherit the throne, while when you choose ultimate geniture, your youngest son will always gain the succession. On the contrary, though, when you choose house seniority, all of your house will be accounted for succession, and the oldest number of that house that is not you will be chosen to succeed. That can be a little bit problematic though when it comes to age because oftentimes your rules will die off very very quickly and you don't want that because they will have a very short reign and a short reign always gives you a negative 15 penalty with your vassals. Now that we've gone through all of the theory let's get into a practical example. If any one of you watches my streams our first stream was me trying to unify Austria in Crusader Kings 3 but the problem we ran into is that after our ruler died and he had accumulated so much power the entire realm fell apart and we didn't know what to do but now we're a little bit smarter so let's get into it and let's try to save this once more so now we're in game and i'm going to try to change my succession law as quickly as possible as austria since i failed on stream so miserably doing it this time though i promise we will not break apart the first time he dies as we can already see, Duke Ernst of Austria currently is very terrible at learning. And learning is one of the main factors that is going to get us into the innovation that we want. So what I will do lifestyle-wise is I'm going to choose the learning lifestyle. Although it's not his core strength, but it's going to increase his learning by a lot. Which is going to make us get to the place where we want to be much quicker than otherwise. When you are a small dukedom or a countdom, you will have to be very strong in warfare. Because what you need to do is you need to become the head of the culture. Oftentimes, that is someone else. For instance, right now is playing Austria, the head of the Bavarian culture is actually the Duke of Bavaria. So we need to get more land and more power than he does. And that's why I'm going to declare war on Steiermark right now and conquer all of their land. Because we, because we chose the learning lifestyle, we can get a very, very good perk right in the beginning. The scientific perk. The scientific perk enables you to get cultural fascination process with plus 35% speed. Which is a lot in this game. This will get you from zero to everywhere, just within a few, few years. After a few wars and after seeing how everything crumbles around me after a few rounds of confederal petition, I am now finally able to get the hereditary rule very, very quickly. In only six years because we, invest in, because we invested into learning and because the other ones did not. Another thing we want to get into really quickly would be royal prerogative afterwards, but really getting into the partition law is our first and foremost concern right now. One eternity later. Right now, I just came out of a very, very intensive war with the Duchy of Bavaria, and in that war, I gained enough land to finally be able to create the title of the Kingdom of Bavaria. Only having that title right now will ensure that your realm will stick together after any kind of succession for a very long time, only until you expand into Bohemia or Hungary or Croatia in that case, and you are able to form those titles, you'll get into a little bit of trouble when you still have confederal petition, but if you have the normal petition law, just go for it right now. After this point, everything is said and done. With my learning, with my learning lifestyle, I'm currently only two months away from finally getting hereditary rule and to enact the petition law. So let me just form it to be safe with everything, with everything right now. As you can now see in the succession tab even, only my oldest son will gain the title of King of Bavaria, Duchy of Austria, County of Vienna and County of Hohenheim. And after just 40 years of gameplay, I'm finally able to change my petition law. And now my realm is safe. Nothing will ever let this empire crumble again. A few of your counties may or may not shift around between your children, but that's it. The, par the primary title will not change. My the king literally just died and we got a new heir. And as you can see, the realm is perfectly fit in this, and it stayed together. So, everything you need to do right now is just manage your vessels a little bit and then continue expanding. If you want more help on managing your vessels, I've actually got a video covering all of that right from last week. And if you want to join in next week, we will be talking about how to get the most money out of whatever stage you're currently playing in the game. Until then, see you around!